GRS. I'm a native of Greenville, South Carolina, and I've uh, been here a long time. Uh, grew up here and, uh, and had some uh, interesting experiences, but I think the significant thing about being in Greenville, South Carolina, it is different. It is different from most places in the country. It is more conservative. Uh, we are Southern, and, and we are rooted to tradition and rooted to the land, and we, uh, we are uh, largely uh, Scotch-Irish descent, but there's something different about the Greenville area, and that difference is manifested, I think, in the quality of life that we have here. We have an exceptional quality of life. We have probably the, one of the two or three best downtown areas in the entire country. And it didn't happen by accident. And it didn't happen necessarily by a lot of government, although government was involved. But there was something different here. What was it that caused such quality to emerge in this area? Well, it's, some, it's a characteristic of phenomena for which we often made fun of. We're a bit old-fashioned. We really like to go to church here in this part of, in this part of uh, the country. And we, we like our traditions, and we like to be moderate in our lifestyle. That moderation, that moral character that still exists here, although it's, uh, it is threatened, that is the underpinning that, that, that enabled Greenville to emerge as, as a, a shining city. We, I call it the queen city of the South, and I believe it is. I'm ready to, I'm ready to stand on that argument. Anyway. <laughs> And can you say how long you've been married? Yeah, okay. I have, let's see, I have been married, uh, what, 42 years. I have a um, beautiful wife, Pat, who uh, grew up here in, in the upstate. And I had two bo have two boys. One's living in Atlanta. He's a real estate broker. One living near Raleigh, who has two businesses himself. And, and uh, so I have Dean in Atlanta, Craig in, in uh up in Raleigh, near Raleigh, and uh, have one grandson, Sam, who is uh, probably the, the brightest, most perfect grandson in the entire nation. Uh, that might be a little exaggeration, but. <laughs> okay, um, and just briefly tell me what you like about working as a citizen reporter. Oh, okay. Yeah. Working at a citizen reporter. The beautiful thing about being a citizen reporter, it gives you something that most people never have, and that's power. Power to influence. That is absolutely uh, invigorating. Mm -hmm. To think that you can change something, it, that removes, as a, as a citizenry, if, if the citizens believe they have the power to change their government in some significant way, they do not become cynical. A lack of power amongst a, a supposedly free nation, a lack of power, real power, and influence, access, uh, results in cynicism. And so, uh, so that, that the beauty of a citizen reporter is it's one of the many steps that we have to take to maintain communications. Uh, a republic is about communications. And just briefly tell me what you know, issue you covered. I know we covered them in there, but I need them. Okay. Yeah, make, okay. Make sure it looks, yeah. Well, what's excited me, uh, and and uh, the citizen reporter has given me opportunities uh, to address, and that is uh, roll call vote. Roll call vote is foundational gateway to the republic. Without it, we have nothing. So, uh, uh, Governor Nikki Haley was absolutely correct when she took on that battle. And uh, the Greenville Tea Party, I mean, the Tea Party around the state was very much involved in that. And that's a story I'd be delighted to tell, but it gets into some detail. Uh, but that was the, the, the most significant thing that we did. And then uh, the next year, which was this past year, we followed up in the natural uh, extension of that, and that is roll call votes in committees, which I think is really more important than on the floor. Because it's in the committees that legislation is shaped. Okay, as we, as we consider uh, how civilization began and, and why it occurred, why Western civilization occurred uh, after a, a terrible 5,000 years of no progress, 
uh, as we search for those certitudes that, that give us guidance and direction on how, how we should organize ourselves, a couple of things become very certain. There is a certain harmony that potentially exists in society, and it is a remarkable thing. But that harmony exists in spite of man's ignorance. And if you, and if you look at uh, uh, man's ignorance, you see that the more knowledge he gains, the, the, uh, the bigger the ignorance is on the outside of the circle. Knowledge is what, what we possess and, and know. As we learn more, our awareness of ignorance grows as the circumference of that circle grows. We become aware of even more ignorance. And so uh, we can look at that and ask ourselves a question. Are we really, uh, are we really masters of our environment? Uh, have we really come to the point where we are really in control? Or, or is it a fact that we are still in spite of this progress of natural sciences, living amidst a great unknown, an integrate unknown that is unknowable. And is it not the fact that really uh, what we thought we knew seems to shift under our feet and disappear? And we find ourselves looking at ignorance at a higher level. So the absolute uh, irrefutable fact is and that man lives amongst great ignorance and must and has only limited capacity of rational thinking to deal with it. Now there is a harmony that exists. And let's talk about the harmony that that is uh, that that creates a, a shining city on the hill. God created us. And he, he created the individual. And that individual has certain natural rights. Why is that the case? <laughs> Hello? Is this Don? No, ma'am, you got the wrong number. Why don't we just put this thing outside, if you outside don't mind. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, so God created man, and and. Uh, he gave him certain, certain uh, faculties. God gave man his body, and then he gave him his facilities, his, his, his capacity, his, his ingenuity, and his intelligence. And, and he, was, he asked him to use that intelligence, to use the abundant surrounding uh, natural resources and to, because man must sustain himself. And he does that by creating... Uh, what he needs. Now, uh, if, if man is to survive, though, he has certain natural rights. These natural rights are the rights of survival. If, if any part of his uh, being is, is lost, then he dies. Let's see how that works. Uh, We'll, we'll skip to that in just a minute, but, but for, this is what God gave us. He, he gave us our own abilities, and, he, and we have the natural right of survival, but we also uh, must have a quality of life that comes from a family. So we can see that all of that works together. But these natural rights, these natural rights exist because we have the right of self-preservation. If any part of our individual uh, uh, person uh, goes away, our whole, our whole existence goes away. We cannot exist without our body. We cannot exist without our faculties. And we must have what we produced in order to survive. 
So we have a natural right for those. We, that, that came to us before there was a government. It's ours. It's always been there. And it cannot be taken away by a government, not legally. So it's the natural rights that we that is the beginning of understanding about uh, how we should get along with each other. But man has added to has added to the quality of life by creating a constitutional republic. And that constitutional republic must be supported by several certain institutions. And those institutions are necessary in society. And one of those is uh, morality. We must have a moral understanding in society. So we can see how all of these institutions work together to create a harmonious relationship that is the underpinning of the free market. So we live in ignorance, but we have available to us a, a spontaneous, harmonious relationship of institutions that will give us a quality of life. So our objective then is to protect these institutions, institutions of the family, of the church, of the rule of law, and that is how you create a, a thriving society. So you see why I retired him. <laughs> That's great. I like that. My grandfather had an old one.